Welcome, foolish mortals. Time to be turning around. If only you could. Cause this here's the wildest ride in the wilderness! Hey, Henry, what's holding you up? Let's get on with the show. We can't hang around here all day. Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've waited for. There's no turning back now. This is the greatest show. It's time for the WDW Beyond the Gates podcast with your hosts, Michael Hurley and Gary Aruda. That's right. This is the WDW Beyond the Gates podcast, episode number 546, recorded from the Defont Leroy Studios in Kent County, Rhode Island, and sunny Southwest Florida. I'm your host, Gary. Joined as always by my co-host and my cousin Mike down in Florida. How are you doing today, Michael? Great. That's good. That's a lot of podcasts, isn't it? What's that? Five hundred and forty. Yeah, every, every week when I hear that five number, it's insane, isn't it? It's wild. I don't know why. How we made it this far? We like I get memories of like episode ten from the Chaska Studios. I'm like, God, we've been doing this stupid thing forever. I have bad flashbacks of those episodes when the when the uh, internet was like a nine second lag. Yeah, oh yeah. Well, I was only paying like nine ninety five a month. <laughs> that you was told bad. me to get like, like headsets and stuff. So I went to like Office Max. Yeah, I bought like that little telephone operator guy thing that right, right. You know, it sticks to the top of your melon, and the other thing comes down, and you got like that little thing in front of your mouth. And our yeah, audio no. was so bad back then. Look wasn't how it? far we look how far you've come. Oh, uh, we've come a life. long way. Yeah. Just chugging along, a labor of love. I mean, not just the the contents come a long way, but the quality is so much better too. I mean, we've just it's oh yeah, production We're, excellence, excellence in broadcasting. E I B. <laughs> um, what's new? Anything going on down there in your neck of the woods? So. Golf is weird. I just have it, to tell you something. So, okay. <laughs> you know number five. Yes. Okay. That that one where you boasted about your drive and then left four in the water, and then we conceded <laughs> the hole. We don't need to. That's good. Yep. Talk we don't about have to. that again. But so, I just I just go right. I bail right. I'm always right. So a week ago, my tee ball was on three tee box. That's very far right. Oh, that's very far right. That's past that like creek. I didn't. Even, I didn't even think you could get there from there. Oh, I hit a. I hit a bomb. I <laughs> hit a bomb. So I. I'm like God. I think that's right of the creek. So I go up there. Oh, I'm right of the creek. There's a ball on the tee box. I'm like, oh God. I hope that's not me because we didn't know if there were people on the tee box. You know. Can you even get there? Yeah, you can get there because okay. yeah, yeah. So you can get there. So I walk up there and and is my line, my tailor made. TP5, my God, it's on the tee box. So last week or a couple days ago, I'm teeing off and there's guys on the tee box. Well, what gets into your head? Now you're like, oh, I have to yell four, right? They wouldn't even know where the ball's coming from. If you're They wouldn't know where the ball's right. coming from because they're not. Uh, yeah, they're. <laughs> <laughs> so there's guys on the tee box. So what do you do as a golfer? You take that tee box out of play, right? It's like when there's OB right, you pull hook it left. Oh, when there's OB left, you f you flail it. So I take the tee box out of play, and what do I do? I hit one 250 right down the middle, a little right to left draw. Perfect. I got 112 in. I mean, I'm right before that creek. I got 112 in. You're in the Gary Aruda zone right I'm there. In the, but no, you were too far right. I was, I was to the left by that bridge. Oh, gotcha. So yeah. Really, water doesn't come into the play. Unless you do the, you know, the SH <laughs> word. Um, but yeah, it's it's just, it's just funny. Like when you when you don't want to hit a house, <laughs> you just go the complete opposite. Like your brain just, 
You, you don't even think in golf. You don't tell yourself what you need to. You stand on the tee box and you do the exact opposite. You're not supposed to think that way, though. That's that's why I st- stink at golf. Yeah. Like, you're supposed to think what you want to do. You're not you're supposed, supposed to say, to trust I your swing don't want to do this. Right. Yes. Correct. Doesn't usually work out, but that's what you're Correct. supposed to think. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's guys on a tee box, don't thin it over the green. So what do you do? You leave it at your shoes. When you're on number six and you see that picture window and you're in that front bunker, please don't thin it 180 yards into that guy's living room. So what do you do? You leave it at your shoelaces. When you're on 18 and you see that chain link fence (laughs) that I hit it into. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) That's the worst one of the day, wasn't it? I've never seen it. No, my shank, honestly, my shank on 15 almost went backwards. <laughs> oh, it was like a shank with a hook, so it started coming back. I don't, away. you know, 15, the one with cre- the creek. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had, I had, a, I bombed a drive. I'm right in front of that creek. I got 115 in. <laughs> my third shot, I had 118. I don't, like, I don't know, like, other than hitting a tree and it coming back, it went backwards sideways. At least it didn't go in the creek. It didn't. That's the thing. I was literally three feet from the creek, and I hit a full pitching wedge, <laughs> and it was short of the creek. <laughs> Such a stupid game, isn't it? So dumb. It's so dumb. It's the worst. <laughs> All, right. All right. What do you want to talk about this week, Pards? You want to talk about September? Do you remember? Do yes. you remember? Do do twenty nine September? Doom, boom, boom, boom. I heard they're gonna play that song all day on Guardians of the Galaxy on that date. Oh, they used to play that at the Metrodome. Oh, really? Yeah. The Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're talking about September. Is September? Yes. The best time to visit Walt. Yes. Tomorrow? Yes, the answer is yes. All right, that's going to do it for this week's episode, I guess. We'll just wrap it up and uh, call it a day. Um, <laughs> no, but why? Let's let's talk about the why. And okay. there's there's some simple answers, but I think we can dig into it and get to that second layer. The first most obvious reason is the crowd levels. Everybody is back in school. No, and yes. You know, like Everybody. obviously the southern schools start a little earlier. The they start schools. earlier, so August is a decent time to go, but you still have the northerners. Right. Like we, we don't start always, until Labor Day, yeah. We used to always go on our Disney trips in August because my dad worked um for a jewelry manufacturer. So they used to just have shutdowns. So they would shut down in August for two weeks and he had that's to good. use that's when two of his weeks yeah. during that time. So that's when we always went to Disney was that time. And, um, you know, it was always slower because the Southern schools were back, but all the Northern schools, they don't go back until at the time it was always the, uh, Wednesday after labor day. Now they go, right. might go back a little bit earlier, but yeah, like you said, everybody is back to school in September. And they're also just back to school. So most parents aren't going to take their kids out. The You're not pulling your September. kids out. Yeah. No. Right. So you're not getting that big rush yeah. for that. The weather's hot still. It is still hot. Middle of hurricane season, so that scares some people. I don't know. How much does that deter people from traveling? Honestly, it does much. It does deter a lot of people um, from cruising. That makes sense. Yes. Yep. Uh, I don't know how much it detours people, but yeah. it is. It is the hottest time for hurricanes yep um room rates are generally lower so it's very you you can get a good deal dvc points it's the lowest to our other addicted to dvc podcast but um it's always the lowest points which actually makes it hard to get a dvc room in september sometimes um for the hoarders you know yeah, like maybe the at the order. seven month you you know if you want your like you're not it's going to be very hard to get that uh last minute tower studio which is only 10 points over at riviera or the value at animal kingdom for sure like yeah, it's, points it's, yeah or seven stupid. points yeah it's going to be hard yeah. to get those but you're still going to be able to get 
you know, your standard room at seven months, and certainly at eleven part, months, yeah. you can get whatever you want. Well, yeah, that's true. So yeah, I mean, it's good for that reason. Um, yeah, like I said, the the weather is still fantastic if you like the heat, which I do when I go. I like yeah. If, when I'm in Disney, I want to be hot. Yeah, you want to be warm, absolutely. I like it. So I know some people don't. Um, maybe it's not as much of an advantage as it used to be, but the food and wine festival is going on. People like to visit during that. It's definitely lost a lot of its luster to people like you and I, but I think a lot of people still like to go. I mean, that's basically the reason they started doing the food and wine festival because September was dead. Right. Try to draw in some crowds, some locals. So guess what? Let's start it in July when everybody's there. And now we don't have a reason to go in September. Right. When they've, they've come back on that though. It started very late. Oh, they certainly did. Um, yeah, I mean, but the parks are dead. Dead. You don't have to worry about doing rope drop. You don't have to strategize as much. You could just kind of go at your own pace and you're not waiting in line. You're not feeling like the bottlenecks at certain places and certain times. Um, I will say this summer in July when we were there, it was it felt pretty dead to me. Yeah. There were a couple times, you know, Magic Kingdom always seems busy if you're in the wrong spot. You know, there's some of those narrower walkways or trying to get out at the end of the night going down Main Street. But like Epcot at World Showcase, maybe because there was no festival going on, it was like you could like play golf. Yeah, it was. It was crazy. (laughs) You could hit like a low three iron over in England. England and France wasn't terrible. No. So if it's even lower, like we're going to talk a little bit about touring plans. I'm sure everyone who listens to this show is at least familiar with touring plans and how that website works. But they have like an algorithm that tells you historically what the crowd levels are going to be and they predict it. And then they tell you what it actually is on the day of. And you can look back at, yeah, you know, past years and things like that. Um. When we were there in July, it was saying like five, sixes, and sevens, and it felt dead. Yeah, right, you're right. Yeah, you're exactly right. Right now, what are you seeing? Twos and threes on touring plans for coming up? So right now, Sunday, September 15th, Magic Kingdom's a two, Epcot's a six, Hollywood Studios is a five, Animal Kingdom's a six. Overall level is a four. Okay. So that's that's pretty pretty slow. Yeah. Uh, the day that we arrive, it's mm-hmm. another four. Magic Kingdom's two, Epcot six, Hollywood Studios six. And Hollywood Studios is always going to be a high number because they have nothing to do there. Yeah, the There's wait times are there. always going to be high. Right. Yeah. And uh, Animal Kingdom's a five. So it's pretty much the second or third week of September, crowd level overall is a four. Yeah. That's pretty good. I mean, four is. I mean, you don't you won't see a two overall at all ever. I don't right. Think. Like I'm looking at right now. It's Sunday night. Big Thunder Mountain, eighteen minutes. Yeah, I mean the park's closing in probably ten minutes though. Also, right? That's closing true. Ten, I assume. Yeah, but still. Yeah, I mean those things are pretty accurate too. Like I noticed. Yeah, he, he's um, very accurate. If you, you know, they don't have anything to do with us. They don't advertise. It does cost money to subscribe, but. It's a great deal, though. When you're in. Oh, yeah. When you're in the park and it shows you what the posted wait time is and it shows you the actual. It's so accurate. It is. Because like we were when we were there, I was looking at it for, I want to say Midway Mania, Toy Story Midway Mania. And I think it said like 60 minutes. But then the actual wait time was 35. And I think because I timed it because I wanted to see how good it was. I think it was actually like 33 minutes from when we got in line to get on the ride. And the posted time was 60 minutes. So it's like scary accurate. And there's yeah. people that constantly report while they're and in the I park. actually do. I if I remember, I will report because it's just you know, know, our community. Yeah. We want to sure keep this accurate. But um yeah, I mean. Now, it's interesting, this 
it kind of has nothing to do with it being September, but you notice that when did they remove the Virtua queue from Tron? The slowest time of the year, right? Yeah, yep. September 9th. So now be interesting to see the wait times on what that. The wait initially. time is, yeah. I might have to do a, a little test run. Little yeah, a little case tutty. Because you like that ride and you can never get Love a virtual queue. So you yep. don't really get on it. Now, if it's like a 30 minute wait, you're gonna hop in that line. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. sure. Yeah. Or now if you want to do like rope drop one day, you go right over, do Tron first, knock it out. And that's what we're evening. gonna do. We're yeah. gonna do the uh the early admission. Yeah, it's the best. I mean, that really helps. It, it it does. I was never a rope drop guy. I, I guess because it was always so damn crowded. Yeah. So it didn't matter. It feels crowded because they hoard you into one spot. Yeah. But then you get in there and it's like, okay, you really do have about 90 minutes where you could basically everything's a walk on for the most Yeah, part. like the first time we experienced rope job was when we were in California in in January. Yeah. I said, you know, I want I want to do the parks. We've never done them and we rope job and you would get it was it was like you started a marathon 2 hours before everybody else. Kind of like what you're saying is you'd get on your first ride, you get on your second ride and you do your third when everybody's doing like the quote A ticket or E ticket. Yeah. So like they would do like the most popular ride when they got there, and now you're going over to lesser popular rides. So you're jumping on five, six, seven rides before the place is filling up. Right. Yeah, because we did it. We did the early entry Magic Kingdom one morning, and we rope dropped Seven Dwarf Mine Train, and we were in line before they started letting people on. It was probably like 25 minutes by the time yeah. we got on the ride, which is nothing. And then we got off, and Sarah went over to do Thunder Mountain, and it was a walk-on. She was on and off that. No, she did it by herself. I stayed with the girls, and then we yeah. did, like, pirates and grabbed a snack. Like, we did so much in the first hour and a half. We had breakfast, things like that. So it was it was definitely worth it. And if you strategize yeah. it, you know, we yeah. didn't really plan it out because the girls don't like the thrill rides, really. And also, Peter Pan was closed when we were there for refurbishments, so that wasn't one to get to early. But, you know, you got to figure out the ones you want to do early. Like, Peter Pan's a good one to get done early because that always has a long wait. Yep. Seven Dwarf, probably Tron now. Like, those are going to be the main ones to try to right. bang out in those early morning times if you can. Because, you know, like Small World, you're always going to have a chance where it's going to be a 10-minute wait. And you'll be yeah, absolutely. Yeah, anytime. yeah, yep. Yeah, At even point of the day, it's going to be, yeah. Even Haunted Mansion, like 25 right. minutes. Like, sometimes it'll bump up to 60. But if you wait, if you're patient, you go back and it'll be a 25 or 30-minute yep. wait. So, yeah, I mean, you can really take advantage of it and get a lot done. And I think, like you said on a previous episode, it's great because you could do your rides until noon then you can get the hell out of the park have lunch hang out right. by the pool and then if you want to go back at night you can or hop to another park at night you can right. do, do that. a park hop yep no it's perfect and this is like your time to do the, like this is when you're going to do parks that's kind of the point of this trip for you guys yeah i mean we did it extent. last yeah. we did it last year just out of whim it was like okay it's cheap points at the grand floridian let's do it and when we went to the parks and we walked on every ride, I mean, we literally walked on Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. It was like it was back during COVID when you went. Yeah, it was. Almost. Yeah, because like we waited, we, we we walked, 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 walked. We got to a point where we were just starting to slow down. And there was a couple that like, hey, you guys are two, right? I'm like, yeah, like, yeah, they're calling for a two. So I look over at the guy. He's like, you a two? Party of two? I'm like, yeah. He's like, come on. He's like, jump on. So like we literally came to a stop and then we continued moving on. Yeah. So it wasn't quite a walk on, but it was as close as it could be. As close as it could be, a three minute wait. Yeah. Absolutely. And we hammered out eleven rides. And I think we went back to the Grand Floridian Cafe and got like a, a, a brunch at eleven forty five. <laughs> That's crazy. And then you're just like, Well, I don't need to go back. I did pretty much everything and we can do it again tomorrow. So Right. We hung out by the pool, took a nap. I mean, it is it's amazing. It was so eye-opening because because of COVID and the post-COVID 
right rush the parks were miserable miserable crowd overcrowded yeah that revenge travel for oh, like that revenge 18 travel months was pretty destroyed miserable destroyed that place yeah and i mean we got to a point where we we actually hated the the place <laughs> yeah you, you weren't loving the parks at all i mean you hadn't been right that's true too. you were down on it until we ate at steakhouse 71 yeah and you finally got on property like my cousin said he goes you guys used to go all the time you'd go once a month on a saturday i'm like it was too crowded it was a miserable experience and then last september i fell back in love with the place Yeah, it's great. DVC and doing it differently makes a huge difference, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Really does. And I, I also like the idea of going in September outside of just the crowds is it's still like everything doesn't get dark early. So you still have right. like, full daylight. You, you still do. Yep. You can use the pools every day. You're not going to get a 60 degree day. Randomly. Right. So the pools are in play every day. Um, if you wanted to play golf, it's still going to be cheaper. It's not in the expensive yep. rates yet. Um, oh, there's just so much. It's like the per for somebody who likes to go in the summer, September is absolutely perfect because you get all the summer parts of it with the you weather. You get all the summer parts, but you don't. I mean, it was hot when we were there a couple months ago. It was very hot. It, it was hot, hot. Yeah. And, and you're still going to get a 92 degree day. The, it, the other thing too is that we are still in rain season, but it's not the June, July, August. Right. We're starting yeah. to taper off when we haven't gotten rain. I got to turn my sprinkler system back on because my grass is burning. We haven't had <laughs> that heavy downfall in eight or nine days. So we're just tapering off now. and We're going to start heading into dry season. Oh, so you're not even getting like those afternoon storms. No, hmm. no. September really starts tapering off. We'll still have, you know, in July, if we're averaging nine inches, uh, we might be at six. So we're still, you know, you still get still a good storm. Yeah. We're just starting to taper. Now we're in the middle of September. So we're really tapering off. Um, So you're not getting that. You're not getting the crazy high humidity. It's still going to be 92 degrees, but it's not going to be overbearing. Like you said, it's, it's enough to want to jump in the pool. Absolutely, yeah. But you're not running for cover to get away from that oppressive heat. Yeah. No, it makes perfect sense. Now, how about... Are you considering water park? While you're yes, we, we talked about it today. We're going to go hit Typhoon Lagoon. We've been nice. paying for these passes. Might as well use it. Yeah. And that's my favorite water park. Yeah, you like that one. And if that's any, any indication of what the parks are, we could probably just whack that out in two, three hours. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you go early. Right. Now, is that something you would drive to? I know you don't usually drive once. Yeah, we had done it a few times. I love that wave pool. Yeah. I absolutely love that wave pool. Um Yeah, I think it's I think it's much better than Blizzard Beach. I love the lazy river. Yeah, i I like Blizzard Beach. Oh, do you? A lot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've only been to each one once, and it was a long time ago. Um, both Lazy Rivers are good. I like Blizzard Beach because they have more of, like, the the raft rides, like the longer yeah, okay. lower slides. I don't yep. like the, the thrilling ones. I don't like the big drops. They hurt, like, the the creases in the slides, like, hurt my they back. Hurt, yeah. I don't like that. I'm not a huge fan of water slides in general. I don't love them. I'll go on the ones in the resorts. Those aren't bad. Right. But like the big straight drop down. Ones yeah. And like, yeah, I'm probably going to have to redo the humonga cowabunga over at Typhoon Lagoon. It's been a while. There you go. The one at Blizzard Beach is scary. That's too much. I can't do that. That it's one's. I yeah, that. that's yeah. scary. I got up to the top of that and I was like, oh, I don't know. Did and you there do are it kids yeah, I did. You had you, no interest. I won't do that. No, because you're not strapped. Like that's I don't mind roller coasters because you're like strapped into. What are you thing. afraid? You're gonna fall off the side or something? Yeah, yeah. Oh something. no, no, no. I know it's unfounded, but that's how I feel. 
Oh, no, no, no. You're fine. You don't like height, though. Is it a height thing or is it oh, seriously partially, like yeah, a security thing? It's more of a height. Like, if I'm that high not secured into something, I start getting nervous. Too. That's fair. I mean, yeah. Like, I don't mind the Skyliner. That doesn't bother me, even when it stops. Like, because I'm inside. I'm totally contained. But, like, if I was standing on, yeah. like, a bridge looking down from that height, I'd be freaking out. I mean, it is it is one of the few things that give you an amazing rush. Yeah. Is those huge water slides. Like, roller coasters are one thing, but you stand up and your heart is going. And you're looking down, there's 100 people. I'm like, I, I kind of want to chicken out, but... <laughs> I've you waited. Like a, in line. I got to do it. I got to do it. You got like it. an eight year old behind you, and you're going to. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's one thing I don't remember at all from when I went to the water parks is how long the waits were. I remember there being some waits, but not that much. No, 10 minutes, time. maybe 15 minutes on a super popular, but you move around. It always feels long because you're like on stairs and you're holding the stupid tubes and it feels like it's never moving, but I feel like it goes pretty quick. Yep, and you're standing in that dirty water. Mm. You ever notice you don't get athlete's foot anymore? Yeah. No, I don't know. I don't put myself in that opportunity very often. I'm I'm just saying like it used to be like a popular thing. Like you'd always have to like wash your feet after you went in a pool or else you get athlete's foot. Like I never got it. I don't know anybody else who had it. Like yeah, I just only, wonder if that's a fallacy. The only time I ever got athlete's foot was working at the golf course because my shoes would get soaking wet in the morning and then I'd have like wet socks all day for like nine oh, hours. Those things must have roared. Oh, they were did bad. You throw I, them out? I mean, you didn't did you dry them out or just throw them in the laundry and have Sue deal with them? Well, this was when I was living at home. I was with Sarah at that point. I was married. Oh. When I was working on the golf course. Yeah. Did you ever ask her to smell them? No. They stayed <laughs> in the garage, though. I had multiple pairs. I had to let them like, dry out for two days until I could wear them again. I do the same thing like when we were walking roadie. Yeah. I'm cutting the grass. Same thing. Yeah, you got to leave those shoes out there. Because mm-hmm. you take them off and you're like, yeah, they can't come into the house. Now let me ask you a question. Absolutely. So you have you have two youngins, but they they're, they're growing up, they're getting up there in age. There's going to come a time where they're going to be off to college and doing their own thing. You're going to be owning DVC for a while. Mhm. Is this going to be an attractive time to come? Is this going to be your oh, yeah. time? September is going to be your wheelhouse, huh? I think when they're if if they're not coming with us and we're doing just the two of us, I could yeah. see more frequent trips like shorter trips you don't you don't worry about the airline price yeah at that point hopefully i'll be okay to not have to deal with that not have to worry about it i mean yeah at some at some point yes but but... you won't be doing the 10 days like you did this past weekend you'd be doing more trips like us probably not a two day but more of like a four day three or four days yeah yeah like go come down in in uh do like a christmas trip Christmas trip, do Festival of the Arts, you know, yeah. flower, like try to like time it around different things. But yeah, like a September, longer September one to take advantage of the slow time. Absolutely. Yeah. I could see that. Yeah. I mean, it makes perfect sense for you guys to do the September. No reason. Yeah. Not. No kids and I can drive. Yeah. You're trying to go with the slower parts all the time. course but then you do like to go at busier times though because you love being there at christmas time yeah but we always go right a couple weeks before so it's not crazy it's that's starting to be busier and busier though i mean Mm, yeah but it's still not terrible yeah when we go at christmas we just go and just to see the lights and hang out like september is the time that i want to go to the parks yeah usually go around your birthday which is always busy because that's easter time yep so, yeah, I mean, September seems like it's not even the best kept secret. It's just usually not logistical for most people. Right, everybody it knows it's a it's it's the cheapest, it's the lowest points for DVC. 
The parks are dead. Yeah. But you're right. Everybody, it, you just went back to school. Yeah. If you have kids, it's almost, you can't do it. You, no. Because yeah, what is that to. process if you want to pull the kids out? Do you have to write a letter? Do you have to talk to the teacher? Like, what do you have to we, we only took them out for two days. So we just, I'm just saying note. in general, like, if you were to take them out, I haven't done it. We did two days. I just sent a note saying we're going on a family vacation. They'll be absent on Thursday and Friday. That was and it. there's nothing. There's no follow up trying to guilt you. Like, I think so, you know, a, a C student and you shouldn't do well, it. So there's none of that. I mean, they're both good. They're both good students. Right. But so I'm just saying, like, would that. they guilt you? It sounds like yes, because I think Angry New Phil Juniors had that guilt trip a few times. Okay. Okay. From teachers saying, oh, they're going to fall behind. You know, you can't take them out for a week. Things like that, especially as they get older, middle school, high school age, you know. So I don't know, but we've literally only done two days, so I don't know. They they're not going to say anything for two days. You just lie at that point. We didn't. We said what it was, but you know, you just say they got sick for two days. (laughs) Wouldn't do that. Yeah, I mean, or you could say there was a death in the family, or you know, whatever, a million different things, right? I was just curious, like, what, what type of pushback they give. Yeah, I really don't know. I'll have to report back if we ever take them out for a longer time. But I doubt we will, because, like I said, as they get more into school, it's more of a detriment, obviously. Like, I'm not going to take them out when they're in, like, ninth and seventh grade for a week. That's tough. You miss a lot. You know, yeah, you could. Yeah, you miss a lot. Plus, they like it and they have friends. You know, I get it. Yeah, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't pull them out either. One or two days, and you work it into a weekend or a holiday or something. That's that's a way to do it, I guess. Right. But I don't know. You have anything else you want to add to the September? No, I don't think so. Well, the other thing, though, actually, um, before I almost forgot, you said like reservations. Basically, you can get any restaurant. We're looking today. Everything's available. Chef Mickey's breakfast and dinner. Probably beside Victorian Alberts, you could probably eat anywhere you want. To, yeah, Topolino's. Oh, yeah, yeah. V&A is always going to be because that's actually more of a local place. And there's only like eight right. There's only like ten, 10 or reservations yeah. or whatever. But it makes sense because you're going to have more locals because you don't right. want to pack a suit. Very true. But yeah, like we're at Topolino's. Like you couldn't you couldn't book it ninety days. That's no, I mean, Chef Mickey's, 1900 Park Fair. I mean, you name all the hot spots. They're yeah. all available. Right. Um, the Castle, Cinder- not that you're looking for that, but I bet Cinderella Castle might be a it, little... There was, there was one or two. There was, there oh, was really? Open. Even that yeah. you could get. That's crazy. A week, a week from it. <laughs> yeah. You know what Kristen said she wanted to go, and I think we're going to have to do it because we've been talking about it for years? Garden Grill. So good. You recommend breakfast or dinner? I've never had breakfast there. Oh, okay. I definitely recommend dinner. It's, they got a skirt steak with chimichurri. Yeah, with the chimichurri. That heaven. sounds good, and I love turkey. The turkey was really good. Yeah, that sounds good. It was very good. And then go ride living with the land a few times. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'm sure the breakfast is good, but I definitely recommend the dinner there for sure. And the interaction was okay. It wasn't too much. Uh, it if anything, it is t- not too much. But like we saw each character like three times while we were there. So would it be? It would be too much for Kristen and I. You think? No, because you could just wave to them and they'll just walk right by. They they know that they came to you already. Like that's true. Like the girls, every time they came by, the girls got up and gave them hugs. But if you don't want to deal with it they'll just keep going yeah, like we've always done like pictures and said hi but there's been times where they've come and like i don't want to be a jerk but i'm like yeah you got you can move on to the next table and i got you know kind of give you the nod like oh okay the tight lip nod the tight lip nod did you watch that one that i sent it's you so stupid where he sees his mom in a grocery store <laughs> he gives the tight lip nod is that perfect or what it is very dumb <laughs> <laughs> But no, I mean, there was one point, I think, when they went, uh, Sarah took the girls to the bathroom, and I was sitting there. We we were done. We were just waiting for the check or whatever. Yeah. And I was sitting there, and the one of the characters came by, and they, like, 
waved to me. I just like waved and I like started cutting my food and eating and they just walked away. So I think they're pretty good at figuring it yeah, out. Yeah, of course they are. So yeah, no, it's good interaction. Plus it's the they're all costume characters, so they're not act they they can't like talk to you or anything. Right. So right. You can just wave them on. They're not gonna care. It's such a beautiful restaurant though. It's nice. I mean that yeah. setting is beautiful. And then one I've been there twice and I felt like almost the opposite of Rush. Like I almost feel like they don't push you out. Like I feel like both times I was waiting for the check. Like, hey, where are you? I need the check. You know what's funny? Because you hear this all the time. Like, I thought Topolino's was amazing. Like it felt like it was a signature dining where they really do need to move tables. Yeah. But you didn't feel rushed at Topolino's. Not at all. The only place you feel rushed is Ohana. You just hear these horror stories about Ohana. Like they're just, it's like they they bring you in and you get your rolls and they sit you down and you haven't ordered you like your soda and your Sprite. And then here comes the salad. Here There's comes the wings. wings. Yeah. Here comes the noodles. I mean, they brought the food right out at Garden Grill. Like that was quick but... yeah which is normal i mean it's it's a, it's a theme park restaurant where you sure. expect you know and you want family be, style so everything's want, ready yeah you want to be out like chris Absolutely. and i'll sit there for three hours but you guys probably want to be out in an hour just over a little yeah hour 15 and go on with your night but i want to say it was 90 minutes though easily our dinner there yeah i didn't feel rushed at any of the restaurants in july maybe the most was Acre Shoes. The pr that's the princess okay. one. That was very crowded. Um, I feel like that was like everything came out quick, and then they dropped the check pretty quick. Because I was shocked at how how nice it was at Hollywood Studios. Yes, the Brodio Roundup. Not I rushed thought, at all. I thought it was going to be Ohana on steroids. No, they didn't. They didn't. They took their time. They were. Oh, yeah. That was a great experience. Yeah, no, that was absolutely great. But anyway, I don't know. I don't have anything else to add for the uh, the September. I would definitely no, you... recommend if you're able to to do it. I mean, yeah, September is a great time. September, and I don't great. think it'll. I don't think no matter who you tell, like you could say it's a great time to go. I just think logistically, seventy percent of the clients. Yeah, you'd rather you'd it. much rather go because you could spend a lot less points. Absolutely, TVC wise, of course, it lower just, lines. Yeah. But it's not uh, not going to happen. So even though I know it's the best time to go, I won't be going in September for a week, probably for another 10 years. Yeah, yeah. You know, so. Anyway, that's going to do it for this week's episode. You know where you can find us. Our YouTube page is youtube.com slash at WDWBTG. Check us out over there. You can find us on all social media platforms at WDWBTG. Our Facebook group, WDW Beyond the Gates Podcast Family. Join us over there as well. You can find the show wherever you download podcasts. Our website is WDWBTG.com. Please subscribe, leave reviews wherever you listen. It does help us out quite a bit. You can email the show, info at WDWBTG.com. Mike at WDWBTG.com and Gary at WDWBTG.com. Is there anything else I need to mention here? Nope, you hit everything. All right, that's going to do it for episode number 546 of the WDW Beyond the Gates podcast. For my co-host, Mike, my name is Gary. Thanks so much for listening, and we'll talk to you again next week. Now it's time to say goodbye to all our company. And I see. See you real soon. K-E-Y Why? Because we like you. M-O-Y